22nd, 2019, tonight on City Council work session. <clears throat> we have a few different items on the work session for discussion. One, uh, City Policy Manual. Two, uh, the retreat. Three, Planning Commission vacancy. Four, Clerk Treasurer's computer. Where would you like to start? Beginning. Start from the beginning. From the top. In addition to proposing changing the name of the publication from the City of Tenino Personnel Policy Manual to the City of Tenino City Official Handbook, the attached document has been reviewed by the Mayor, the City Attorney, and several members of the City Staff. In each case, the input was evaluated and either included or held in abeyance pending an opportunity to discuss the proposes, proposed changes with the Mayor, City Council, or both. Major changes to this document include updated and expanded definitions, updated and expanded section regarding personnel records, addition of an employee ID card requirement, major provisions of Chapter 2, hours and attendance, and Chapter 4, major revisions to the training and travel policies, major revisions to Chapter 6, benefits and leaves of absence and time off, major revisions to Chapter 8, employee responsibilities and conduct, including the addition of an acceptable use policy, social media policy and email management and retention minor revisions were throughout uh, so yeah it was prior we just kind of had a uh, we had various policies and then we had the city personnel policy manual was was trying to be comprehensive and then we at various points developed financial policies and we developed uh, a social media policy and we didn't really have a place to hang it because you can't put social media policy within the personnel policy manual so we are attempting to kind of put everything into one envelope and call it the City of Tenino Handbook. Uh, you all have been given electronic copies, and if you've requested, you've been given paper yes, copies. Too. Okay. So uh, take these, review them. You know, we don't, we're not gonna. We could we could review things if you if you found stuff you want to go over tonight, um, or. How you guys want to go about? Real quick, just one question: right. the uh, employee IDs. Are we going to be doing uh, proximity passes with those or something? I, 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 be I believe they're just a card. Yes, it's just a uh, intended to be uh, really for the employees. If uh, there's other classes of personnel, you know, our elected or appointed officials that need them. Um, there's no reason why we can't or shouldn't issue one. Um, but the idea is to, particularly for the public works guys that have to go out and uh, you know, do all manner of things on other folks' property. Oh, you're talking business cards, like what we are. No, no, it's an identification card. Right. Hang on your person. Yeah, you know. badges, just okay. ID badges. All right. Um, around his neck every day. Yeah, we're not, they're not going to be tied to like... Uh, like door locks or something like that. No. I mean, we're not that sophisticated. It's just if they're out to uh, somebody's house and they can say this is where I Yeah, and we can provide you guys with ones too if you'd like them. Sure. Yeah. Just if it's a... Well, I just was wondering what they were, what they were for because we've never had that before. Yep. We have the technology at the police station to make them. Good. So we're just okay. going to do it. Okay. Yeah, we're in the 20th century maybe. We're getting there. We're about 2002. Yeah, we got about 483 days left to get there. <laughs> Y2K, yeah, we survived Y2K. Okay. So, we're gonna, uh, so you guys take these, read through them. If you have if you have questions, emails, or work session uh, opportunities, when we're done with this and everybody's had a chance to review it, we'd adopt it by resolution. Um, just and that would just be a way for you guys to say, yeah, yeah, we agree with 99% of the stuff in there. I started reading it, but it's hard to read on it. So I'd like to have a paper for something. Okay. Like yeah. Yeah, and then you can right. highlight yeah. things. Yeah. And That's what I'll do. I'll take it to work with you. Okay. 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 All right. So we'll keep that on the work session, John. We'll keep this on the work session. These guys are going to mull over things and, you know, read read themselves to sleep with the manual. Do you have anything you want to add? The only thing I have to add is the printed manual in front of you uh, has, um, it's the most updated version of the draft. It includes uh, feedback from the city attorney. It includes uh, feedback from 
uh, members of the staff, and it includes the addition and clarification of some other um, just general tidy, tidiness. Uh, our volunteer, Ms. Judy Kreiderman, <laughs> really had a tremendous amount of input with respect to the organization and uh, the structure of it. So uh, it's far, it, it's not changed, it's just different. I think it's better organized, it reads a little easier. She's good at a lot of things. <clears throat> Topic two. The administration would like to discuss possible topics of discussion for the March 16, 2019 Special City Council meeting at Tumwater Fire Department. Attached for your consideration are the results of last year's session and suggested topics for this year's session. So if you go to, I don't know what page it would be, page 91 in your package, you will see the vision document that we produced at last year's uh, council retreat. <clears throat> so, you know, we wanted to, we're, we're not going to throw this whole thing out. We just want to kind of, we want to check in on things, see what we've accomplished, see if any of the, you know, the, the ideas have evolved or changed or uh, lost, uh, lost interest. And then we want to see what other things we want to discuss. So for instance, this year we're, we've asked, well, I think we're considering, strongly considering, inviting the planning commission uh, to be involved and our new planners, since we might have some, you know, some land use issues that are kind of more relevant. <clears throat> That's a good idea. Well, hopefully by then I'll have some good news. I'm talking with Jim Walsh. Uh, I met him again at a uh, convention that I was at this weekend and asked him if there's anything that the state can do for small jurisdictions like ours that's been paying out to the state for decades and getting almost no money back as far as our streets and sidewalks. And one of the biggest reasons is because we don't have money for matching. Uh, so. We're going to get together and see what we can do about that. So hopefully in March we'll have some good news. Excellent. But that's definitely something that we need to keep on the front burner as much as possible. Streets. Yeah. And money for them. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. Got money for streets? Yeah, good suggestion. Well, yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. you have an update on the whole uh, solar program. Okay. We should have some information about the grant possible plans. On, on the yeah. tier, so just add, 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 you know, so we want to add roads, streets, street money, street funding. We want to add the tier project. Yeah. So, what about updates on that uh, housing development? Yeah, my help on my place. Uh, we, yeah, we can talk about that. Um, I, I, the last I heard was that Carl Taiji had sold like the development rights to Rainier Development. So it, it sounds like it's moving. And they're hoping to have up, like five demo homes this year. Something to that effect. Yeah, that's what I heard. You know, once they get those, look up past that. Mm-hmm. Place in the middle of the house. All the stuff, preservation or whatever it's called. All of a sudden, once they started, got the funding, bam. It's amazing. You ever hear of that again? It goes for quite a ways. It goes all the way to 93rd. Yeah, I should have been there. Almost all the way. Yeah. 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 Three, the city has, has, a, has had a vacancy on its planning commission since the departure of Commissioner Darla Kolbus in April of 2018. Ms. Erin Conradi, who resides at 173 Howard Street North, has applied for the position, and I desire to appoint her as planning commissioner to the vacant number three position to fill the term that expires February 6, 2023. We go to page 743. <laughs> Now, page 95, you'll see her uh, her application. There's not a lot there, which I don't know. I think 
I think that speaks more to the application than the applicant. Um, she's 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 attended several meetings. She's come to a couple different town halls, and she's showed an interest. And she approached us saying, you know, I, I'd like to know how I can get involved. And we're like, oh well, we've got a vacancy well, on the planning commission. This is the this is the young girl that was at right. the uh, citizens citizens academy. Yes. academy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we told her there was a vacancy on the planning commission. She was initially a little, uh, a little like unsure of it because nobody, you know, not not a lot of people understand what the planning commission does. And so she, well, I I don't know anything about you know land use decisions. Well, well, you're a citizen when you get on there, so you know we'll send you to training, and you just have to be a a, a level-headed individual that's willing to listen and learn. And after Millard had that discussion with her, she submitted her application, and she has shown interest since then. She should be here tonight at 7.30, I believe. She said she would. And uh, we'll, we'll introduce you to her at that time, but we're hoping that we can confirm her this evening. <clears throat> Any questions? No, I think she'll do a good job. She, when I so she went through the Citizens Academy with you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was here that night. Yeah. Um, were you, I was done. Were you a workshop? Yeah. Was yeah, I, I talked to her about it about so when we had this seat open, but mm -hmm. she hadn't lived in the city long enough. Yeah. And she sounded a little bit hesitant, but she's not, she, she willing to jump in and learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems, seems sharp. Uh, item four. Yeah. She's willing to try. Yeah. Uh, late in 2018, the clerk treasurer's computer was infected by a virus distributed via email. Uh, during the process of cleaning the computer, the city's IT service provider at Tegan at Technologies discovered that the computer had its hard drive was failing. At Tegan noted that the computer is well over six years old and should be replaced to keep pace with current technology. Additionally, the laptop computer used by the clerk treasurer and other members of the administration is also aged, and while no hardware component is failing, should also be upgraded to keep pace with current technologies. After some discussion regarding the technical aspects of computers in general, the subject of portability was also raised. In the end, Tegan recommended that we, the desktop computer be replaced with a laptop computer and docking station that would allow the clerk, tre clerk treasurer to use a single computer, whether in the office or while traveling, and the older laptop be retained for use by uh, public as a pay station, workstation that could be used for, uh, to make credit card payments at the front of City Hall. Uh, attached, you'll find consideration for hardware and software quote and the amount of one thousand nine hundred sixty-one dollars and eighty-seven cents, which would be, which would include proper disposal of the existing computer. So that is up for uh, debate later. Does anybody have any questions regarding that need? It's kind of an unexpected expenditure. Well, the, the amount of work that those computers do. Six years is a long it's time. It's lasted a long time. Yeah. Really a long time. And still being able to use it for something else. Yeah. That's a good thing. Okay. All right. We got eight minutes, and the public works director has requested that he be able to provide his report during the work session. It doesn't matter. No, no. no. We got eight minutes left. It's all yours. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe so we can talk about it. We can talk about anything. You think <laughs> you got eight minutes? I got eight minutes. I don't know. That's the longest I've ever been up here. floor is yours. Um, how is everybody doing tonight? Good. I haven't met you in a new one. Hello, Hi. I'm Troy. That's not his name, he's making it. I'm making it. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys noticed a bunch of construction going on in McClellan, dirt work. Um, Looks like they got pretty much all of the grading done. Now they're going through the storm, stormwater um, retention stuff. And so they're moving right along. Um, I think probably next month they should be starting footings. So that building will be up here pretty soon. Yeah, it needs to be up. Yeah, they're working out of that little building next to it, but just reeks it high. just reeks of, I, don't, I can't believe you don't smell it, but it's pretty bad. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah uh -huh. um, Lindsay with that Cascade 3D came in last week and Monday and did her 3D video of the museum, Corey House, and Tickner School. 
So I haven't seen any finished product yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Should be pretty cool. She's got it all put together. She's just now she's stitching together like the, the photos uh -huh. and the websites. Yeah. So she's supposed to be getting with Rich Edwards to get content, mm -hmm. and she's just having a hard time kind of connecting with him. So I'll yeah. Help her out with that. Ah, cool. Yeah. Um, so we took a drive and walked through the old park the other day, me and Jason, and noticed there was quite a few dead limbs and hangers up in those trees. So I'm going to have a couple of tree service companies come in and kind of give us some numbers and clean some of those up, um, especially the ones that are really dangerous. Um, a couple of those limbs in those trees, if you haven't noticed, are pretty big. And they're coming down right where people park and where the kids are coming out from school. So I think it's a priority that we get those kind of maintained. Um, well, I'm sure we'll hear some backlash from people, but they just have to be done. Have to be done. So um, we've been going through a lot of sewer pumps lately. Don't know why, but we have. Um, we have uh, been changing some, a different brand. We're putting a new brand in right now. Hopefully that will put us in the right direction. The E1s, um, you know that they haven't lasted very long. They're kind of a pain in our, our butt. Um, it cost us, cost us a lot of money. Um, so we have been going with Barnes pumps, which are a way better pump. So um, it's going to be a slow process, but um, if we can do 10 a year or so, that's what, we, that's what we plan on doing. Those pumps. Oh, pumps he's talking about are, you know, in your backyard, mm -hmm. there's that lid thing. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. basically where all the waste goes. And then there's a pump in there. It's about this big. And it, it chops up everything and then pumps it into little pipes. And it doop, 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 makes its way down to the wastewater treatment plant. And those pumps are in every single mm -hmm. freaking backyard. How many do we have out there? 700 and almost 800 pumps. Yeah. God. And so they're con. Yeah, well, they they constantly are breaking down. Like, yeah. you know, people are putting wipes in, or people are, you know, hairs clogging it up. And the E1 pumps aren't the best, you know. And so they, so the crew has to go out almost on a daily basis and pull those things up, and then swap them out with ones that they've rebuilt at Public Works. And so Troy has been on a hunt for quite some time to and and look for you know the ability to replace them with something more durable. So he is going to try Grady, is that what he said? Uh, Barnes. Barnes. Yeah, and they're Barnes. roughly, um, the package for them, they call it retrofit, is like 20, 2200 bucks. Um, to rebuild. Just for a brand new pump. The E1 pump. The, the rebuild, it depends on what you're going to rebuild on that pump. If it's a motor, stator, switches, capacitor, and the E1s, you're looking at 30 some hundred bucks. If we rebuilt the whole pump. Buying a brand new one is probably 3600 bucks for E1s. So these are a lot better pump and a lot better price. Um, some We've changed out quite a few, probably six or seven so far. Some of them we had to change the electrical box panels for. Of the new ones. Of the new ones, right. The E1s, we pulled the E1 boxes off and we put actual Barnes box on. Um, I don't know why, some of them just don't have capable of doing both the pumps, so. But it is what it is. You know, are, we sure, are we sure that the people that when they have a failed pump they're going to contact the city to find out so they can get out there yeah we I, I i think it's a good idea for us to send out some more flyers um do some education again because it's getting to the point where um people are not calling, not calling yeah. um they think they're going to have to spend money and so they just go out there and turn the power off oh. and then we don't know about it because we don't hear the alarm or nothing so um, yeah, so it's time to probably send another flyer out and yeah. do some education on that. Because that's the worst thing is the wipes. They're, they're killing those things. And that's, that is a no-brainer. Yes. Well, some of them, some of those wipes, they say they're flushable. Well, but you can't. Yeah, they say they're good for septic systems, but they're not. They're horrible. But, uh, we just changed the pump over here at Aunt Kate's, um, that building there with the apartment complex. Um, that was probably the worst we've seen with wipes and it was horrible so they're getting a letter but well, yeah. those are the ones we're going to put in the barns that sits in there the barns cuts those things uh, the wipes and everything just chews them up like nothing um, the e ones don't they just clog up and they go up in there and they just make a big long tail of wipes oh. yeah so anyway sorry to get on the subject of that gross thing 
Um, Ty's been working pretty hard changing out the street signs. Um, they're looking pretty good. I think tell, tell them what you've been, they don't know anything about. The street signs? So, we, um, we ordered 50, what we did was there's like sticker wraps. The existing ones we have are the blue. I don't know if you've noticed. This is for time. the the street the signs, street actual the street. Signs. Like where it's street. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you Elvis. go down the you go down there and they're made out of wood still. So well, some yeah. of them are, yeah. And some of them are the aluminum ones. But what we do is take them down, clean them, straighten them out, and then we re we stick them, we um, wrap them with the correct thing, and they're green and white. The old ones are blue and white. Uh, blue and white is private right? So someone ordered them in the past. Thought, thought it looked better. I don't know. Looked so, better. You got a better price. Exactly. I don't know. So we decided we need to change those to <laughs> proper. Yeah, pink. Yeah. Um, we were started today working on the way signs that we got from um, Sean. 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 Um, they look great. Um, we will probably next council meeting. I have some pictures for you. We'll put them up, and you guys can see it. The ones going up, coming in from Tom Waterside by uh, the elementary school. We'll probably pull that one out. We'll see if we can put it back there or somewhere else in that vicinity. So, um, basically, that's all I got. Any questions? Water report. Oh, the water report I am working on. I will have that next month for you guys at council. It's Six looking pretty good. Way better than last year and the year before. So. Six year street plan. Um. Six. Yeah, we'll get that. Okay. okay. So, you want a copy of that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll give it to you tomorrow. Um, okay. no, All right. Any questions for Troy? Thank you. Thank you. So Troy's goal is to have every street have a street sign on it. They're, they're few and far between in town. Yeah. And I think he's got enough to have half of them done. And uh, now he's, which was basically the entire street budget. So uh, he's he's throwing together some ideas or trying to find some ways to figure out how we can pay for the rest of the other half this year. Yeah, it would be nice to get them all done in one year. Yeah. Instead of the rest of it out. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Troy. Bye. All right, we'll take a five minute recess. I thought it started at oh. seven thirty. I'll say you can keep one of those. Yeah. <laughs> You had no way to do it. I'm going to get a little bit of a few more seconds. Okay. There comes in more minutes. I want to say, girls, you'll be tonight. You can't set the volleyball. So I'm going to throw the best basketball. They were tied for first place at 4 and 1. The money was at 5 and 1. And it was 4 and 2. What was the score when you left? Huh? When you were there already? I got there when it was 16 to 11. Early. They were leaves. They led pretty much the whole way. The, our girls are the, <laughs> so I've got Montesano. I've got Montesano agenda open. One to fifteen, one to thirty-seven. So that was the whole way. And I know got with his two points at eighteen to sixteen. But uh, uh, basically, boom. so the girls ended up losing. They they lost by a total of uh, fourteen points. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, there was one at the Sandstone Apartments. Okay. Did you have the one on Central? I went to the one at the on bottom Central. of the work session. Yeah. Um, right below that was uh, natural causes. I don't want to buy security. <laughs> yeah. If we buy the yeah. 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 Well, they had the ones that were in surplus. Yeah. 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 Somebody bought them waiting for anybody else. Yeah. 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 Could be could be caused by those homes. Yes. She dies of old age. She's been in another facility for over 30 days. They had they had like three hundred. They were supposed to serve us this last year, and then we just never, we never heard.
I don't think you have too many, you wouldn't have too much of a report, I don't think. Uh, I've got some, just some brief stuff here. Okay. Um, nothing too wordy. This is going to be quick. Wordy is not a word. It is in my world. <laughs> what is wordy? Wordy. wordy? Oh, it definitely works. Well, this is one, it? Yes. Really? It refers to something that's uh, right written with 50 yeah. words. That's pretty cool, Jason. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's like from the years years with old 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 very small. Yeah. That's got a new travel trailer. It has its own bedroom. Embellished. That's wordy. If the kids have their own bedroom in it. Yeah, but you know what I've always learned? You never argue with the teeth. I've been accused of many things. Oh, really? There you go. Because he's one of them. It's an adverb. It's an See, that's why I came to the council was to learn that. Okay. Yeah, he's bought one of them. 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 He's I got him. I got him. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
consisting of EFTs in the amount of $40,474.64 and claim checks 27922 through 27955 in the amount of $27,263.39 for a combined total of $67,738.03. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. That is the consent calendar. We have no executive session. That brings us to presentations. Administration would like to present Ms. Erin Conradi, the administration's nominee for appointment to the vacant number three position on the city's planning commission. Stand up. Would you like to come forward, please? Yes. You put you on the spot. This is just a chance to introduce yourself, and if the council has any questions about you or anything like that, give them, give them a chance to go ahead and introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? I'm Erin Conradi. Can you turn that thing on, please? Is that better? There you go. <laughs> um, so I'm Erin Conradi. I just moved into the actual city limit last, last May. So my dad has lived over by Offutt Lake since 2000, so been kind of familiar with Sino, but really excited to actually be living here and getting more involved. You've had some, you've been involved with a few different things recently. You went to the Police Citizens Academy. Yes. You went through that, and you've gone to a couple different town halls, and you it piqued your interest, is that? Yes. Okay. Council, do you have any questions for Aaron? Well, if I thought it was, if I it was you, I wouldn't have said such nice things or no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, stepping up to the fill position. I know we've had some vacancies for a while there, so it's nice to get somebody on, back on there. So I appreciate your interest in uh, stepping up to it. Seems all well me, but you'll get, the, you'll get it. Well, thanks. Move approval of the appointment. Second. It has been moved and seconded to confirm the appointment of Miss Erin Conradi to the position of City of Tenino Planning Commission, Commission Position Number Three. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Now we will administer the oath of office. Oh boy. <laughs> this is when it gets really official. All right. You ready for this? Raise your right hand. Yes. I, Erin Conradi. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Yes, yeah, start over now. <laughs> that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the State of Washington. Of the State of Washington. And the ordinances and regulations. And the ordinances and regulations. Of the City of Tenino. Of the City of Tenino. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Perform and discharge. The duties of the office of the duties of the office of planning commissioner, planning commissioner according to the law and to the best of my ability. According to the law and the best of my ability. Yeah. Thank you. Come up and shake everybody's hand. And you, and you get, and you Public hearings. This is the second public hearing for the City of Tenino Text Amendment TA 2019-001. Okay. The public hearing, this public hearing is for public input and discussion of Text Amendment TA 2019-001. Second public hearing. This public hearing will proceed in an orderly fashion, and I would like to ask your cooperation in the following proceeding. <clears throat> Everyone present will be given an opportunity to be heard. The clerk will be recording what is said. Therefore, when you address the council, please begin by stating your name and address. Before hearing from the audience, I'm going to introduce Mr. John Millard, the city clerk treasurer, to present information about this project. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Millard. 
<laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so, so where we are, this meeting is that the, uh, re as recorded in the minutes of the last meeting, which you just approved, uh, was were the comments by uh, Commissioner Leslie Lamb in his private capacity. Uh, how long the ability to vacate a lot combination would exist in my answer, and also Council Member uh, Godeback's comment about uh, she would prefer the vacation provision be available to any owner in due course, uh, to which Council Member Watterson agreed. Uh, so, what we're talking about for those uh, who uh, have not previously been in the audience is. Um, this is a change to the Tenino City Ordinances that would allow uh, a, an immediate owner in due course of a piece of real property to uh, vacate a lot combination which would allow a subdivision of his land. And I use that term very carefully. It's, uh, you, you know, the subdividing process is actually what we're trying to avoid. Uh, I should have said revert back to its previous boundaries. Uh, so under certain conditions, we would allow that. It would allow that landowner to process that action uh, at less cost and in less time uh, than the current process, which is uh, the entire subdivision process. So uh, that, that's where we are. Um, pending any questions to the public, I would commend to your deliberations if uh, anybody else would like to join council members Godovac and Watterson. Uh, in expanding the scope to uh, other than the next immediate pr um, succeeding landowner. Thank you, John. Go to back in Watterson. It sounds like a law firm. <laughs> at this time, at this time, the floor is open for comments from the audience. In fairness to all in attendance. Each person will be given an opportunity to address the council for an initial period not to exceed three minutes. If more, than, more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had a chance to speak. I am requesting the council members to hold their questions to the public until everyone is done. If there is anyone in the audience who would like to provide public comment during this public hearing, please step forward and do so at this time. I have a question. You have to come up to the mic. Harper Roderick. So I'm wondering, am I on the agenda or not? This is not when you do that. No, this is the public hearing. Did we skip it? I'll do it next. If there's anyone else in the audience who would like to provide testimony uh, during the public hearing, please come forward and do so at this time. Are there any council members that have any questions of the audience or staff? I would still like to support changing uh, the language that allows uh, somebody to subdivide besides the next previous landowner. I just, if it's uh, two lots at one time or however it's configured before, uh, it seems like we can go back and figure that out pretty easily and uh, allow them to do that. So I just think in today's, if we can fit some more houses on a lot uh, instead of having one big lot, it, it allows people to do that. I agree. Thank you. Any other comments? Public testimony of this hearing is now closed. So this doesn't adopt anything. Yeah, this is just, OK. All right, that brings us to public comments. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to provide public comment, please come forward and do so at this time. Uh, Ms. Barbara Roderick, would you like to provide public comment? Am I on the agenda? Uh, this, is your this, is your this is your public opportunity. No, my mouth is full. Hey. Barbara Roderick, 143rd Avenue in Tonino. So, I don't know if everyone is aware, but Tonino is home to Miss Rodeo Queen Washington 2019. Um, this is the first time in over 30 years that a Thurston County uh, resident has um, taken a state title for the Washington State Rodeo. Um, so it's kind of a 
kind of a big deal. This is her hair. And I was just kind of thinking and hoping that it would might be a nice idea if we could get a sign, like a metal permanent sign, um, saying. Kind of like Yom does. Pardon me. Kind of like Yom does. Yom yeah, kind of like Yom does. It says um, home to uh, Rodeo okay. Queen, uh, Washington, 2019. Yom, Yom did it when when the mayor's daughter was runner up. In Miss Washington in like 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Just say that's that's why that sign's there. So I, I I don't know. I think it'd be kind of fun. It'd be really nice if it could be on um, the ag sign of town, you know, if you will. Um, I mean, I'm sure that this council could find it in the budget to may, maybe make that happen. So I just wanted to put that out there. That's all. Do you have any questions? Thanks, Barb. If there's anyone else in the audience who would like to provide public comment, please come forward and do so at this time. <clears throat> yeah, she's a nice girl. Working on her second master's degree. Yeah, she's sharp. If there's anyone else who would like to provide public comment. Could I just add? Just a little bit. Go for it. Do we have a choice? No. no. <laughs> so I just want to add that on January 16th, um, she's having a fundraiser at the vault. Um, she will be traveling all through the state and the nation. February. Uh, January 16th? February. Yeah. February 16th. Um, so she will be going all through Washington and uh, the nation representing um, and being an ambassador of agriculture. Um, the 4-H, FFA, so if you want to come out and support her, you can. Thank you, Ms. Roderick. Thank you. No, thank you. That brings us to proclamations, zero. Old business, number 10. In the spring of 2018, the administration first raised the issue of amending the Tanaima Municipal Code to allow wheeled all-terrain vehicles on city streets. The administration would like to take this issue up for adoption by the end of February and is requesting city council input at this time. So if you go down to page 132, you'll see the draft ordinance, ordinance 897, which would allow ATVs uh, to be ridden on city streets when properly licensed, properly outfitted. The only street that they really wouldn't be able to is on uh, still can't if it's under 35. That's what it was. So yeah. when we when we lowered the speed limit, it allowed for every single street within city limits to be able to be ridden on with an ATV. Uh, this is something that you see a lot of already. Yeah. So you, you know, wait till next month for, uh, for us to vote on this. Yeah. Well, this is your this is going to be your chance to read it read the draft. Well, I've known about this for years. Yeah, yeah but you haven't seen the draft. <laughs> You've known about it for years, but the draft, you haven't read There's no way you've read the draft. It wasn't drafted yet. <laughs> so this is new for you guys to go over. Uh, so you, you'll have, you know, you'll have your chance in the next two weeks to read over this. And then we will have it on the agenda at the next meeting for first reading, at which point if there's things you want to change, like you want the wheelbase to be 10.5 inches, instead, you know, instead of 10 inches, or, uh, you know, you want... Uh, I, no ATV may tow other vehicles. You want to allow them to tow other vehicles, you can bring that up then. Uh, because we, you know, we do allow that during Oregon Trail Days. You'll see Chris Hallett towing that, uh, those little, the little train car thing behind him. You know, that, not that, you know, not, I don't know, I don't think the police are going to pull over a little train car of children. But, uh, you know, there, there's things, there's things that you guys should look at and give us your opinions on. <clears throat> No person may operate an ATV side by side in a single lane of traffic. Probably smart. Does it say anything about wheelies? And make sure it allows wheelies, Jason. Operate in a safe manner. You can do safe wheelies. So give that some thought. If you have any feedback, please let us know. Uh, new business ordinance 896 would amend Tonino's land use regulations to allow certain actions pertaining to lot combinations and the table of allowances. The recommended action is to move to approve Ordinance 896 
as a first reading. We will, of course, do two readings. So if there's going to be any debate on the things contained within here, we would need a motion and a second, and then we would open it up for debate. Make a motion to approve ordinance eight nine six eight nine six. Yep. Yeah. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of ordinance eight nine six and ordinance of the city of Tanana, Washington, approving text amendment TA two zero one nine er dash zero zero one, amending titles one hundred and one one four of the Tanana Municipal Code. Is there any discussion? I was just trying to find where it says where it says the. Uh, that you, John, could help. I know I saw it in here somewhere, but I can't find it. Yeah, when he's looking for it? I'm sure you do. I'm sorry, I thought you were referring to uh, Not the Council member O'Callaghan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know that's what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Dave is wanting, I'm sure, to discuss so, the the concept of uh, amending it. Yeah, to rights to. Uh, then I would suggest the motion be something along the lines of uh, move move to approve um, uh, ordinance 896 uh, with the caveat that the restriction about the immediate succeeding landowner be removed uh, and open it to any succeeding landowner. What John just said is my motion. Second. You already have a motion on the table. Yeah. Well, well, you can amend I'll, I'll accept amend the, the friendly amendment. Amend the motion. You can amend your motion to what? Where is it at? Like, find the section that you're referring to. Or what did you say, John? Uh, I did not refer to a particular okay. section, but um, hang on just a second. Oh, it would be uh, in section three. Uh, section, section three. three Number one. Okay. Uh, but I understand the requirement. So we have an amendment to the motion to reword section three, paragraph one where it says the request for a lot split is made by the immediately succeeding owner in due course, you would like it to state what? What John said. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't even know if it needs to be in there. Can you just take it out? So does it, is it silent on it, or should we put something in there that... To replace that. There's a reason it's in here, I'm sure. And I'm trying to elicit somebody, you know, whoever, you know, if there's... Is, is, did the attorney have a reason? Was this like a... You know, with, where, where, what was the reason? Yeah, if there's a rationale for it. So, so the rationale is the more limited the exception that we try to carve out, uh, the less likely anyone higher in our food chain that's involved with the Gross Management Act would be apt to uh, object to it. And the other one was just keeping track of the lots. There was, I think, when we talked about it before, there was some talk about being able to track what right. the lots were. Right, right. where they were and right. what their size was so, back when. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if you tried to remove those uh, from the ordinance, um, it wouldn't stand a chance of surviving. Be be because um, the strictures of the Gross Management Act is you, you can't... Uh, they don't want to introduce the possibility of somebody taking advantage of these types of transaction to do something that would be against our comprehensive plan or uh, specific statutes with respect to land management. So let me ask you this. So, you turn it. so a, person, a person has this huge piece of property. Mm -hmm. He divides it into three lots. Right. Okay? Then the next person comes along and buys it and wants to put it back out into one big lot. Okay, mm -hmm. he can do that, right? Wouldn't there be the measurement somewhere of what those three lots were, just in case the next guy wanted to make it into those three lots again? Uh, it sh you should be able to go back through the title documents and, and establish that. But 
Uh, but you're saying that you think the Growth Management Act would they have a fit if we wanted to, if we well, took yeah, that because what, out of the argument. So. Because um, I'm really trying very hard uh, to be tactful. The Growth Management Act is there because we want to keep urban places urban and rural places rural. That's the stated purpose of it. So if you do something to take three little bitty pieces and combine them to make one big piece, and you take all of that and you take it and you record it, and then you come back later and try to undo it, it, it is uh, not likely, but it, it, it's, it could happen that you don't get the dimensions right or somebody changes something and if they changed something that when you redivided it into the original dimensions it would be in contravention of a land use regulation you know one of our current land use regulations so if you lose the records on that then you don't have the basis to make the decision and again if, if you let it get too far down line to do the transaction, then you, you definitely lose the ability to uh, So add this in there. Parse out the fine that You have to provide, be able to document the previous. Yeah. Re, uh, so if anybody down further on wants to do it, they've got to come up and bring you the Bring you the, the original. original. Yeah, all we're saying is, yeah, if you can determine, you know, if, the, if you can determine that vacating the combination, restoring it, then all three parcels would have uh, no restriction that would currently not be allowed <laughs> under our land use regulations. Hey, I say change it, if they want to fight us on it, we can always go back and make it something less, but... Yeah. I, I mean, I think if it was that way one time, how could they say you can't put it back to the way it was already? Well, see, and, it me. The, and again, that's the I, truth of the matter, that's the other side of the argument, is it's, you know, why should the landowner not be able to do what he wants to do with his own property. Yes. Um, it happens all the time. And, and all the time. No, no, but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, we make it more difficult and we make it more expensive for them to do so because it suits our purposes to be that way. I'm still for it. If they want to say no or fight it for some reason, we can go back. That's my. As long as they can provide the documentation of what they were what, what sort of before when they combine them. Okay. So, so I don't know how to say that in the wording. Well, I guess I, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to do it on the fly. <laughs> what I would say is we can take, we have an amendment on the table to accept this as a first reading. Uh, we could pass the first reading and we could we could early. ask and then council just kind of by shaking their heads could say, hey, can you come back with some tweaks to that based on what you think we wanted? Or we can pass it as is and move it on, or you can strike your motion and ask uh, the clerk treasurer to come back and try to do it, or however, however you want to do it. I'll just keep it on this as we have. I'll just, my amendment to it, or whatever you want to call it. Yes, uh, we, didn't, we, we, we talked about doing an amendment, but there's no amendment. But you could adopt the first reading, and you know, in this in this debate, I don't know if these guys even care. Maybe these guys are quiet and totally against you. I don't know. I gotta speak up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't want to assume that everybody wants to change it. But if if all of you are saying, yeah, let's try it, let's try another draft with that number one thing, and consider that at the next meeting, that Mr. Mayor, uh, that's pretty much what I was thinking because we do not have the proper verbiage and if we do this on the fly changing trying to change that without legal advice we may be opening up ourselves for a whole lot of trouble and anybody that tries to do this so what I would what I would suggest and the second read in six months yeah we've got to come back we've got to backtrack on stuff uh, amend, uh, motions need to be retracted and if, if that happens, then I would suggest that I would move, move that we table, not table this, accept this as the first reading uh, with the understanding that we will have uh, further verbiage to discuss. So I'll withdraw my amendment and just accept this as the first reading and 
Okay. Okay. So uh, we have we have a motion and a second to adopt. This is the first reading. Uh, there's some more staff work that needs to be done on this specific three dash one. Uh, we're going to rework it and make sure that you know what's being asked is is legitimate and, and legal and the research will be done with the attorney and uh, you know the, the oracle at Delphi and whoever else we need to consult with to make sure that it is cool so yes uh, with no further ado all those in favor all right. those opposed first reading accepted that brings us to item 12 Administration requests approval to purchase a Dell Latitude 5590 notebook computer and Dell Universal Dock, along with associated software and recycle support in order to replace the computer currently used by the clerk treasurer. The move uh, recommended action is to move to approve the purchase of a new notebook-based computer workstation to replace currently used by clerk treasurer an amount not to exceed $2,000. What is this? What is this? It says recycle old PC and what? Um, the one at his desk has to be recycled. Oh, so. which one are you going to use out in front as a credit The old card? laptop. There's the a desktop laptop. and a laptop. Okay. Okay. And he's saying all he needs is a really nice laptop that can dock in at his desk. Okay. Make a motion to approve. I second. Move the second to approve the uh, purchase of a new laptop and docking station not to exceed $2,000. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Resolutions done. Ordinances done. Reports. Chamber of Commerce. We have a rep? No. Well, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tyler says that he's stepping down, so he'll be looking for a new president. And next month is uh, election of all the officers. You gave uh, State of the City. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much it, really. Yeah. Well, he's not stepping down right away. He's going to finish out this year. Well, this is his last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is his last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. plenty of forewarning. Yeah. Uh, EDC experience. I, I tried that. <laughs> EDC. So EDC, we're, we should add steady in here if we're going to put Eddie's. St Steady's down below. Okay. Uh, experience Olympia, South Thurston, Library, Museum. Uh, the museum, they, fun they finally came to uh, new officers. Lauren Ackerman is going to be the president. I'm doing this off memory now. Uh, Bob McClinton is going to be work a sessioning. A sessioning is making sure everything inside is moved out so that everything is relatively fresh for people to come in and see. Uh, Shelly Ackerman is going to be the secretary. Mary Evans is, is going to remain as treasurer. Uh, as far as VP. Oh, Keith Phillips is VP. As far as me, everything else that I've been doing uh, through, the, through the years, such as taking care of the Facebook page during the week, taking care of uh, anybody that comes down to visit the museum, I'll give them the tours, that all that kind of stuff, and reports back to the board, to this board, of anything that is happening. I'll be taking care of that as well. Uh, so we'll still have a lot of communication between us and them. Uh, but for a little while there, it looked like it'd be a You were going to have a choice. Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 the last communication was, well, could, could, could this stay one more year? And, Fine. Um, well, yeah, but but they finally got they finally got a new board and yeah. we'll we'll continue working on and so far this year alone we've given five tours. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, I think so. Chief of Police. Greetings, Mr. Mayor and Distinguished Counsel, Robert Swain, your Police Chief. Um, I just got a couple of things that I'm going to go over real quickly, because uh, I promised the Mayor I'd be short. Um, we had our access audit for our internal technology, and we passed it with flying colors with a few things that we have to correct, but um, as a small department, we were uh, right on top of all uh, uh, complaints requirements for that, so we, we got through that. Um, 
our reserve academy, the paperwork went up today. I hope to hear something tomorrow or the next day in regards to uh, starting, but it looks like an April 2nd start date and a July 26th graduation date. Uh, we have been able, uh, it's amazing how this has really taken off. So we've been able to fill all of our instructor slots. They want to come to Tenino and help us out. And we've also been able to uh, get some assistance from local uh, vendors. So um, Home Depot has graciously offered to give us their wood scraps so that we can build our crime scenes with it, uh, mock crime scenes. And so uh, I just wanted to make the, the council aware of that, that they are being uh, donating some, some wood to us. Um, the year-end report that I promised you I don't have tonight. Uh, I'll have it by next uh, 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 council meeting, I, I promise that. Um, our update on Lexapol is we are well into it. Um, it's moving uh, rapidly. John Steins has really taken it uh, to the level where he probably is going to have this done by March, the end of March. And so we're really, we're really moving along with that. Um, just a real quick update, our assault victim from uh, early January, if you haven't heard, she passed. And uh, we are waiting for the prosecuting attorney's office to let us know what the next steps are. The suspect in that case is still locked up in Thurston County Jail. Um, tomorrow morning, I'll be having a, a sergeant's exam for the stipend sergeant's position. Uh, some may ask why do we need a sergeant right now and um, I, my response is because um, I may not be here uh, and somebody needs to be here that, that can make decisions and uh, a sergeant, uh, we have people within our department um, on my team, uh, they need to start getting some leadership practice and development in that area and so I want to give them that opportunity. Um, the uh, other thing is, is uh, with our uh, two new reserves that we swore in today, uh, it uh, brings, and we're going to do another ceremony in front of you all like we did with Sam uh, Garcia, but it brings our total uh, manpower up to 10 within the police department. And so we're, we're, we're where we, we want to be and uh, having a sergeant to assist me with some of the administrative stuff will really help out. Um, we are also going to fill the stipend positions available because we have two uh, that are going to be FTOs at the end of the month. So I'll have all three of them will be certified state field training officers. Excellent. Um, and and we'll, we'll be moving along with that. Um, I did get the honor this week of being appointed to the advisory committee for the criminal justice program at Centralia College. Um, so I'll be joining them and uh, working with uh, some of my colleagues to ensure that some of the best practices and, and development is going on within a curriculum, uh, the criminal justice program there. So it's a pretty big honor and I'm, I'm pretty happy to represent tonight in that group. So I'm pretty excited about that. I uh, wanted to give Troy some kudos before he left, but he had to go to basketball game too, which is where I need to go pretty quick. But uh, the speed sign is up if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, there's no question in your mind uh, that when you're coming in, you're doing 25 or not. And that sign will tell you. And we are going to be uh, doing some enforcement of, the, of probably that sign more than the school zone. The school zone, you know, runs for certain times during the day. That sign's 24-7, and uh, they just did a great job uh, putting it in and it's in the right place. So I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy about that. You heard me mention earlier two new reserve officers, so uh, uh, for the mayor's direction to me, our reserve program is up and running, and we are, uh, all of our slots are, are filled, and we'll be, uh, excited to get them through the academy and, and move forward with that. So, um, uh, it's perfect timing to talk about quads, because your police department actually has a quad. Uh, I found this out, I found, well, I found this out last week. 
uh, some thanks to my guys, and, and, and it's been over in public works, and it's now in our garage. And actually, it's in a citizen's garage who volunteered and stepped up and said, you know what, I work on small engines. I want to fix this thing up for you. So he's going to put lights on it. He's going to put police stickers on it. And uh, even your old chief here is going to jump on it with, <laughs> with a helmet and drive around a little Just make bit. make sure you've got a helmet. Yes, thank you. So, uh, so we're pretty excited to have our own plot. Um, and then the last thing is, is in front of you, I put our new mission statement that we worked on. I just noticed the misspelled word, so it's not presents like you get at Christmas. It's uh, having a vigilant presence. Uh, we'll make sure we correct that. Uh, this is going to be not only on the website, but this is going to be at the front of our uh, policies and procedures manual. And we're also going to post it uh, in, a, in our lobby so that people can see it. The big thing there is, is the core values. Um, we all, all of our team, myself, we all uh, had a, a part in this uh, to include Maria. And uh, the core values is what we came up with as a team uh, to, to promote. And then you can see some of the discussion things underneath as to why we're, we're going this direction. So uh, pretty excited about uh, some of the things going on with the police department. And, uh, that's all I have. I'm ready to take any questions from you or comments. Okay. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy the mask while you're Yeah. City planner, city attorney, clerk treasurer. Well, Chief uh, issued a challenge. He said he was going to come here and uh, lay out all his statistics for 2018 in front of me, so I felt compelled to do the same. Uh, the budget's doing uh, pretty good to start out with. Uh, nothing unexpected. We're on target, <laughs> at least with expenditures, but that's because we had a pretty healthy month last month. Uh, not much change in our grant situation. Uh, except I submitted the lexical reimbursement paperwork uh, this afternoon, so we should get about 3,500 of our 7,000 back. Uh, there's some statistics for last year. Uh, I don't know that it means anything other than we're busy. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be probably about the same this year. Um, the frequency of citizens' action requests has gone uh, steadily up o over the years, and uh, the vast majority of those are public works related, and our public works department does a really good job at responding to them, and they do so in a pretty timely manner. Uh, on the public records request side of the house, uh, law enforcement, I think just it's the nature of that beast that uh, people want bits and pieces of information, and Maria does a really good job of getting it out there to them. Uh, on our side of the house, uh, 14 general requests throughout the year. Um, you know, other cities are going bankrupt because of this, and other cities have clerks, and that's all they do is public records requests. So um, I think we're, we're doing okay. Uh, that's my report. Any questions? Thank you. My report uh, attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting and gave a state of the city address. I tried to do it more as a conversation and just kind of went over uh, 2018 and talked about what's coming for 2019. Uh, it was very well received. Uh, I attended the Creative Districts meeting along with uh, John Millard and uh, 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 good attendance. Linda was there, uh, George Sharp, um, a gal from, what was her name? Ms. Roth. Ms. Roth. Uh, and it was kind of a preliminary thing. She went over what the program was to the citizens, and our intent was to try and get together a group of people that would be interested in uh, helping form a commission and a work group. And it, they are meeting again tomorrow at 6.30. 7, 7.30? I thought it was later. 6.30. 6.30. And uh, George is taking the, he's taking the ball with this, and he's going to... He's gonna get it, get it all the way to the end zone. He's he's bound and determined, and uh, everybody was pretty excited about it. And then I met with Bob Droll today, the landscape architect, to talk about the bike pavilion. And gave, Troy and I gave him kind of the general parameters. He's got a vision 
based on what we've all laid out uh, for him, and he's going to draw up and, and put together the schematics and prices, and we will then process that through City Hall and put out an RFP to go into contract with a contractor to build it, with the hope to do that this spring. Any questions? Civil Service Commission, Park Commission, Planning Commission. Do you want to give a report for the Planning Commission? No. Uh, they have a new member. Yeah, I heard they have a new member. <laughs> Facade Improvement Grant Review Committee. Well, we haven't even had a meeting. We've got to get, put something together. Okay. Uh, kind of waiting for Sherry to get back from, from Arizona. From Arizona. Okay. Uh, Julie is going to be submitting a request for the building that the Independent is in. She, is? she said she's going to. I told her to talk to you. Okay. I haven't heard from her. This just came up today. Okay. Just today. I told I'm her that. I might still have her on my phone. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the same or there's an, another one, but uh, someone called uh, City Hall today and uh, asked if that application was available online. And when they called, when the call started, it was not available. And three minutes after the call ended, it was <laughs> available. That, that was probably Julie. Yeah, it probably was. Uh, be that. Uh, their meeting got pushed back to this Monday. Yeah, CIP. <laughs> You were out of town, I and I was out of town. We out of Solid Waste Advisory Board. <coughs> South Thurston Economic oh. Development Initiative. They had a big meeting. Yeah, we did. There was uh, somebody missing because she had to work. Uh, but uh, Ty, our new county commissioner, he got up to, to give a speech. He, he was the keynote speaker. And uh, we kind of digressed into homeless issues. And all, and all different ways of handling them and looking at, trying to look at it more than just as a homeless issue, but the people that were involved in it and how some things could, could be changed that might be able to help. For example, Lewis County will allow people to live in proper areas like uh, RV park, stuff like that in a smaller RV, you know, just a couple of people, that kind of stuff, we're in Thurston County, they're not allowed to. Uh, so whenever somebody wants to say, well, what can I do? If they want to stay here in Thurston County, they, they have to go get an apartment that they probably can't afford, so they end up having to leave. Uh, it was a rather, rather extensive conversation on homeless issue, and the good thing about it is Commissioner Edwards, Edwards was there as well. I had to go to Wenatchee so John can give the other half of the report because it was on the uh, Arts Commission, unless they decided not to talk about that. Uh, the, the only discussion of the Arts Commission is that is uh, that we're having the second stakeholder meeting tomorrow night uh, that Mayor Fournier mentioned. Um, uh, Charmaine Garrison uh, told everyone what Rainier's doing with respect to their portion of the Tenino Rainier Yelm Trail, uh, as George Sharp is wanting us to try, try, try the try, try the trail, try the trail, <laughs> try the try trail. Why try the try trail? <laughs> Say that. I like it. You know, I do too. I think it's great. Um, George is out there. I mean, he's going to bat for us every chance he gets, uh, as with as he is with the other South Sound community. So we really have a friend there. TCOM, Tenino School Board. I don't believe they've met since our last meeting, have they? No, Next we'll Monday. We'll be Next Monday. On the twenty-eighth. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. TR Thurston Regional Planning Council. Uh, I think our meeting's next week. So Perfect. Coming up. TPB. Oh. Next month we'll be electing new officers, and they're probably not going to be new officers, we're just going to retain everybody that's already there. <laughs> uh, more than likely, the, like, the, the last two years, I'll make the motion to get it underway and everything will be accepted. One thing that we did different is, if, if you know Doug DeForest, he's been there since, I think, 98. And he's been there steady the whole time as a citizen representative or as a business representative. Well, he's retired, and we already have a business uh, citizen representative and a business representative, and we kind of wanted to keep him because he's been there so long that uh, what was decided is that we'd keep him on for the next two years 
as a uh, uh, member, uh, now I can't think of the word. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's agreed to do that. Uh, hopefully that works out real well. Uh, what I didn't get, and I was hoping to, was his first year he would have full voting rights as he does, as he's always had. The second year he would just be there to give reports. And this is a position that's not going to happen very often. Uh, most of the time, this is the first time that we've actually had a citizen rep or business rep uh, stay this long. Uh, the chances of this happening again are pretty slim. But we have that that ability now, so we've changed our bylaws. Uh, the only difference, the only thing that I fought for, was instead of just a one-year voting rights to have as long as he's there, that he has voting rights. Uh, it's, it's I lost that battle, but we ha we have the uh, we have him to stay for the, at least two more years. Excellent. Thank Can you. I go back to TRPC real quick? You missed your we are going to be doing a retreat, so if anybody has anything that they want to see TRPC focused on for this year, we we'll kind of do it, I think it's in March uh, also. So uh, help me know if there's something you think they should be doing. Uh, we can talk about that at is our retreat. Is that after our retreat? Uh, it is. Right we can talk about that. I'll look and see. <coughs> That's a good suggestion. Yeah, we oh. could work it out. Yeah, well, if it is, we'll get all right. There's the anyone? Entry. Okay. <laughs> there's anyone in the public that would like to provide public comment? Please come forward and do so at this time. You'll be given three minutes. State your name and address. Hearing none. Meeting adjourned. Department of Commerce is like, we're not giving you a dime until John's out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. That's what I yeah. had intended here. Yeah. And here, please sign it with the magic pen. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have no idea. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. 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 This position. <laughs> Take it. It's a complimentary pen when you become a planning commissioner. You get, you get one pen and a magic blue pen. Don't tell Ron about it. Yeah, that's it. That's all you're ever going to get. You have, you have the uh, you have some training requirements, so I'll get with you on those. It's not difficult at all. Uh, there's plenty of ways of getting it accomplished. Uh, a a, a snuggie. It's a snuggie. And we do most everything on the Who was do you uh, is there a time that I can meet with you and go over some publications that you find helpful? I can I can ask you. Um I tend to work regularly with Sandy Barker and Baker. She was but I could also probably make a record. Well, I mean, just take a lot of time, like, maybe 10 or 15 minutes before the next planning commission. I just want to find out who that is. Let's do that. Yes, it is. And the second time she swore, I'm going to change the version of the cameras. Is it the second? Okay, we'll see you later. No, it shifts. It, the it, the cycle's weird because it's like the, February's weird. It's gonna be yeah, the fir, it's the first one. Thank you. What's your name? I'm Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. I have no name. So it should be the same. Yeah. Are you sure? 
Okay. I will confirm. Well, yeah, I will yeah, confirm it. Because this one was on the ninth. That's the second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, we may have even more time then. So that's yeah. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um, so, the, you know, so now that. So the thing is out there, you know, do, what, what if anything do, does the city want to do? Mm -hmm. yeah, do? Do we want to support it? I'm sure. But what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> do we want to sign? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that we want to buy a sign, we want to do a promotion, we have a big parking lot of yeah, shoot out fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> I think a, a bench somewhere would be... A bench in the park would be really cute. I don't think that we need those signs. I, I've never understood. <laughs> and then the one in Roy where they were talking about... Yeah, if that's the what they wanted to do, she, you know. she didn't live there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't so, know. It's kind of strange. Yeah. yeah. That's, why we, that's why we have a council. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm just uh, Oh, no, they're not better. It's not waiting anymore. Okay. <laughs> See you later.